Today, we're going to have a look at Ansible playbooks. Now, a playbook is essentially a collection of tasks um, which can either be imported via roles or just written out um, straight into your Ansible playbook, which is what we're going to be looking at today. So let's have a look at Ansible playbooks. So Ansible playbooks are essentially just a collection of tasks. Um, and these tasks run in sequential order um, and, you know, pull in certain Ansible modules um, and do whatever, you know, is required of them to do. Uh, if we take a quick look at the collection index in Ansible. So Ansible's um, documentation is absolutely fantastic. Um, there's a whole collection index, but to be perfectly honest, I just use the search. I find the search a hell of a lot easier. Um, but I'm using the collection index today just to show you how many things you can actually manage in Ansible. So going through this list, you know, we've got things for AWS, uh, we've got things for Windows, uh, we've got things for Azure, uh, DigitalOcean, um, VMware, um, and I've actually done a video on managing uh, VMware virtual machines. Um, so go and check that out to you know get a very very uh, simple overview again of uh, Ansible playbooks. Uh, but you can also manage things like Fortinets, F5s. Uh, you've got NetApp storage here, um, and the list goes on. Right, you've even got Splunk in here and ServiceNow. Um, but as I say, so that that kind of gives you a very high overview because if you go into one of these, so if you went into uh, like Community General you then get to see actually all the different modules in, in that collection. So there's a lot, there's a lot. So what I like to do um, is just use the search. Um, so today what I've got, I'm gonna just move this out of the way and I'll bring it back in a moment. Um, we have got a playbook, okay, and here is the playbook. Um, now as with uh, anything you do with Ansible, you've got a playbook and you've got an inventory. Here's the playbook, here's the inventory. So the inventory is just four servers, including the server that I'm currently running uh, this Ansible um, command on, and then we've got the playbook. So um, we can see here on this line which module we're going to be using. So I've just got a three task playbook. We're using the package module twice, and then we're using the service module. Um, and we're actually going to add something to the service module. But the one thing I love about playbooks is anyone can read this. I could give this to my seven year old son, and he could pretty much understand what it's going to do. It's going to install Ansible, uh, install Apache. It's going to use the package module to do that. If we want the documentation on that, here it is. I put that in just for ease of uh, ease of reading and you know showing showing you where all the documentation is. Um, what package are we going? Are we looking at the HTTPD package? Okay, that's Apache in on a on a Red Hat uh, server. And then the state. We want the state to be present. We want that package to be there. Uh, again, here we want to remove telnet. This is freeform. You can call this whatever you want. We're using the package module again. Uh, the name of the package is telnet, and we want to make sure that this state is absent. Okay. And then lastly, we're using the service module this time. We want the name to be HTTPD and the state to be started. And there is one last thing that I'm going to add to this service module is to ensure that it is always started on on uh, on boot. So having a look here, I'm just going to pull this, although you could just use the search and search for the package module. But if I bring this over here, this is the package module. So what's great about this, it tells you the parameters, so you've got name, string, and use. Uh, I don't use the use too much. The great thing about the package module is it can understand the difference in the different package managers. So you don't need to say, Right, I need the yum module if I'm using Red Hat, or I'm going to use the apt module if I'm using Ubuntu. You don't need to worry about that. Just use the package module and it will do both. Uh, if you need to specify it because the package module hasn't worked out uh, which package manager you're using, you can actually tell it to use one or the other. But it kind of defeats the purpose of using the package manager. If you have to tell it, you might as well use the yum manager or the apt manager. Um, and then we've got some examples here. So in examples of exactly how to do what you need to do with this module. You can just lift this. You can copy and paste that. If you have a look at that and this, it's the same, right? I mean, this one's installed NTP date. NTP date, they, um, 
put it all in, you know, ansible.builtin.package, don't need to, you can just use package. Um, name state, name state. Now the one thing about YAML is you need to make sure all your spaces, all your colons, all your dashes are all in the right place. Um, that, that comes after using it a little bit. Um, but there are online, you know, YAML validators and things like that. If you're not sure, you can copy and paste your playbook into a validator and just make sure that, you know, it is valid YAML. So um, we're using the package module. We're using the name HTTPD and the state of present. So we're using the package module, the name of, we're using HTTPD and the state is present. So one thing you might ask is, well, what different states are there? Let's go and look at the documentation. Here's state. We've got present, absent, latest. So one thing um, you might want to you might be asking yourself is the difference between present and latest. Well, surely if it's present, if you're saying for a playbook to make sure that the it's present, it's going to install the latest one. In that scenario, yes. If it's not there, it's going to go. You know, use your normal um, repository, pull the latest version in. However, if it's already there, and you just say present, it won't do anything. If um, you want to upgrade your system, pick latest. You know, if you're writing a playbook that goes around and updates uh, Bash or OpenSSL everywhere, you write the, the package name to be Bash and the state to be latest. And then when it runs, even if Bash is there, it will make sure that it's running the latest version available as opposed to present, where it'll just make sure the bash is there. And if it's not there, it will install the latest, but if it's already there, it'll do nothing. So that's the big difference. So um, we're using the package module twice. Got it here, got it here. And then we have the service module. So services, and we can see it here. Now the good thing about the service module, again, as with all Ansible documentation, really, really well documented. Here are all the parameters we need. And here are some examples. So, um, in fact, this is pretty much the one that we've done. We can see here, we've got name, the service, the name of HTTPD, and the state of started. Let's have a look at this example. Service, the name HTTPD, and the state of started. So we can start it, we can stop it, we can restart it, or we can reload it. Now, the one thing I haven't got in here is if I was to reboot this machine, Apache would not be running. Okay, now if we look through this list, can we see an example that will help us? This one here, enabled. Okay, so let's scroll up, have a quick look at what enabled means. Enabled here, enabled. Whether the service should start on boot. Well, that's exactly what we want, and we want it to be enabled. So all we need is enabled, yes or no. The default will be nothing. It won't actually set. So we want to just go enabled, yes. Make sure it's survives a reboot and that's it so that's this playbook what we're now going to do is actually run this playbook so if I type Ansible playbook now I don't need to give it a dash I I'm going to in this example and then I'm going to show you why I don't okay we're using the inventory file and then we're using play.yaml okay now if I run that it's not going to work and the reason it's not going to work is because I haven't given it to my password and there are no keys set up. Um, so I'm going to do a dash K, which will prompt me now for my password. If you're not running this as root, you will want a capital K um, to make it ask for your pseudo password. Um, and then at the top here, under tasks, you need to type become and then root um, to make sure that uh, you elevate to the correct privileges. Um, and I'll post a link again in the description of um, of how to do that. So we can see here it's gone through. So it's gone through, it's gathered facts, it's installed Apache, it's removed Telnet, and then it started Apache. And that's it, it's done. So just to prove that, I've just taken one of those IPs at random. And here it is. And that is a very simple playbook. Now, obviously, to build a web server, that's not all you need. You might need the files module to copy some files into a location. Um, you might need the Git module to pull down your source code. There are thousands and thousands of modules um, to, you know, to make a playbook do exactly what you want. 
So I mentioned when I ran that playbook um, that I did a dash I inventory. Okay, and there's actually one thing that I'm hiding um, in the playbook uh, to remove some warnings from the screen that I just wanted to, to show you. So Ansible.cfg, um, there are many locations that this can live. If you want a you know server-wide configuration, it can sit in etc and support and support.cfg. I like to keep them within the projects um, because then I can check out a project I don't need to mess around too much then with you know the local Ansible setup. Um, and I've got two things in here. I've got defaults, you know, just making it sure that these are defaults that I want to change. And then we've got inventory. So I'm using inventory. I could set that to inventory.yaml. My file is just called inventory. There's no suffix after it. Um, if I wanted a different inventory file, I could just do that. And then I've got this interpreter Python auto silent. Now, the reason I've got this is there's a couple of servers um, on here um, that if I was to comment this out, and I will demonstrate this for you and run the playbook, I get some warnings about the Python interpreter on these servers. You see here. So, you know, there's some warnings there that I don't really want to to show during my demonstrations. I also understand what these warnings are and they're not a problem for me. Okay, so I have chosen to auto silent them. Okay, and then the other thing is this inventory. Inventory equals inventory. So I don't need this dash I inventory anymore. I can take that out because I've got it in this configuration file. And then in the playbook, I'm saying all. So in the configuration file, it says inventory, inventory. And then in the playbook, it says all. So we go to inventory, all. Right, it's doing these four servers. So if I take that out and run it, again, it started. There are many, many more things that you can do in an Ansible configuration file. You can do things like um, how many forks you want to run. You know, you can really, really tune Ansible. If you've got quite a beefy machine, um, you can, you know, run on many, many servers on one host uh, just by adjusting the forks um, and things like that. Um, I'll put a link in the description um, as well as to the, the uh, documentation for Ansible.cfg um, that you guys can have a look and, and, you know, play around with those settings. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. If there's anything further you'd like to see, um, you know, please leave a comment. Uh, I'll try my best to do a video on that for you. Um, if you've got any questions, again, leave a comment. Um, if this video has been helpful, please like it. Um, subscribe if you find what I'm talking about useful and, and you want you know, future notifications, hit that bell. Um, thank you very much for your time, um, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you.